Hey guys, it's Syndicate here, and welcome to my Call of Duty Black Ops 2 zombie review of Transit. Now, this video has taken me so many attempts to redo just because I'm trying to be as positive as I can and as negative as balancedly possible. Um, if that makes sense. But um, this video is probably going to be a long one, so sit down, get your popcorn, and get ready to chill out and watch this because I've got a lot of topics I need to talk about. And I'm going to try and give reasoning for pretty much everything I'm going to point out. So. I'm going to go off this with a, a negative point, then a positive point, then a negative point, and then a positive point, and um, yeah, that's a great start, and it's starting off with a negative, but uh, hopefully you guys can understand the points where I'm coming from, and this is kind of like from my perspective, and also someone who would be new jumping into the Black Ops 2 Zombies Transit with no idea what they're doing, and um, yeah, so let's begin, I guess. Alright, so Black Ops 2 Zombies uh, Transit we get. This is going to be our story mode, campaign mode style. A zombie map which is going to be epic we've got buildables we've got like, hopefully new perks we've got all this and we jump into the game as a solo player let's uh, let's jump into it as a solo player and um we get no new perk as a solo player you actually get no new perk if you have played all black ops 1 with all the dlc um you have no new perk in black ops 2 zombies it's it's true now this is something that's going to make sense throughout the entire video of saying there may be every single perk we have ever seen and more hidden in transit because transit is full of easter eggs and in my opinion i probably think we haven't even found 60 percent of everything hidden in the map yet i think we've only found 40 percent i know it's a bit of a random number but i was going to say 50 50 but i honestly think there is so much more to find in transit that we could ever think of and i think treyarch's just sat here going noobs but um at the same time from a new player's perspective it's kind of like Damn it, I actually really wanted to jump into this map and be like, Hey, I've got all this stuff straight away. It's going to be no problem whatsoever. But um, yeah, it turns out that's not the case because you jump into it. You haven't got all these new things. You've either got to do something crazy to unlock them or, uh, you know, complete a perma perk challenge to, uh, to obtain it. Um, and if you don't know about them, then you're going to pretty much struggle. So, you know, you jump into the map, you know, solo across all the map, all the maps, just mainly transit we're focusing on. You don't get... You don't get any perk. It's kind of sad. And uh, for anyone who's like, wait a minute, you're a, you're a, you're a liar and a cheater and a fool. Headbutt a wall. Um, we got Tombstone. True, but for multiplayer, try and jump on solo on transit and go and have a look where go and have a look where you'd see Tombstone on multiplayer. It ain't there. It really isn't. It's a bit of a shame, really, because I think it could actually work really well as a uh, as like a live saver. You might be like, wait, what? And uh, I kind of came up with an idea for what Tombstone kind of should be in a uh, solo. Um, so if you look at it at the online perspective, uh, you can you can get all your perks you want. If you go down online, you need someone to pick you up and revive you to uh, you know to, to get back up. Whereas in single player, if you get quick revive, you go down, you get back up, and uh, you've lost like all your perks and everything. Tombstone gives you the ability of going down, you lose all your perks and everything until when you respawn, you jump back on your tombstone that's chilling there like a um, like a droppable, like an instacle or something. Jump into it, you get all your stuff back. Really fucking good perk. Treyarch, GG to that. It gives a really good advantage to like players who are not as good. It's really smart and it gives the ability of the hardcore players to be really smart and obtain all the perks in the map. So that's not like every one from Black Ops 1. That's all the ones you can buy from a perk machine in Black Ops 2 Zombies Transit. So really cool little thing there of Treyarch and I think that's a really smart idea for them to do. It's been something we've been looking forward for a while. Plus, you get all your guns back, which is amazing. Really like that. Not too sure about equipment. I think you might get like Galva Knuckles and Semtex and Claymores. I think you might get all that back because I'm sure it does store everything. But um, you'll lose your Tombstone perks. If you go rebuy that, buy all your other perks, jump back on your uh, Tombstone, you get your weapons, you get everything. So you've just got to be really smart about it. And uh, there's lots of videos and tutorials on how to get like all six perks at once. So um, I think Tombstone's really good. But if you're going to ask me now, like, what's your idea for solo? I think it should be like a safeguard. Tombstone, okay? How it works. If you've got a quick revive, you know, when you go down, you'll obviously get back up. But if you get quick revive and you get tombstone, you'll have two extra slots to be able to buy perks. Say you want to go buy Juggernaug and you want to buy Stamina Up. So when you go down this time, you're going to go down and you go, you go down. So that spot of going down is where the tombstone will lie. But then you could crawl around wherever you want. So if you crawled away, then whatever. Or if you get back up, you can, you know, you see your tombstone there. What you can do is when you get back up, if you stay still, you'll get back up, you'll lose your tombstone if you go down with it. You'll get you'll get back up, you'll lose your tombstone, you'll lose your quick revive, but you'll keep your juggernaut. Or, yeah, juggernaut. I, I didn't call it juggernaut for once. You'll keep your juggernaut and you'll keep your stamina up. So it gives you an advantage. It's like a safeguard. 
most hardcore players would probably go, I don't need that, you know, if I go down, I'd rather just run to Juggernaut and then have the have the space to have an extra perk like Sleight of Hand instead of Tombstone. But for those, you know, who are like, I'd rather I'd rather go down, have Juggernaut when I get back up, and then be able to go and buy Quick Revive again in case I go down, and then maybe like, okay, I know what I'm doing, I don't need Tombstone, or I want to go and buy Tombstone again as a safeguard until my final like, Quick Revive. Um, so I think that's really good and then say like when you've run out of all your quick revives your, your tombstone like disappears as well or like your tombstone runs out because it becomes a pointless perk you know I think that'd be really cool so um, yeah I think that's what tombstone should offer and you know I think it should be there in solo maybe you know same price but just with that ability that I said so if you think that's a cool idea let me know in the comments below and uh, if you do like any of these points guys be sure to let me know in the comments it's going to be a really long video but uh, hopefully it is really practical and Points out a lot of the points that I think are um, pointful and pointless. There you go. I just thought I'd throw in some more point names. All right. So the next thing we've got up is um, is a negative. So I went from kind of like a positive idea to a negative. So, right. Fog. Jimmy. Peter. Rez. Fog. <laughs> um, I met these guys for the first time and I was like, oh my God, what is with Fog? And um, I'm... T for the answer, they will. I think they gave me. Um, I think they gave me a troll answer. The, the track are great. If you ask the right questions, they'll give you the right answer. But uh, I just was like, you know, what's with the fog? Like, why is it there? And I think I, I genuinely think of Jimmy. I got was the quote of, why not? Why, why not fog? <laughs> that sort of thing. I, g I gave him a lot of reasons for why not fog. And um, a great reason for this is if you've ever played Shangri La, you will know how amazing it is to play that map. The color. The design, the feel for it, it feels like the greatest map there has ever been in Zombies. It's probably the, one of the most difficult maps there's ever been in Zombies. It's very difficult. And um, it's probably one of my least played maps because of that. But the feel of it, I always go back and play that, even if it's for just 5 minutes, 10 minutes, or like an hour. Just because the colour of, color of it is amazing. It's so nice. And then if you look at the colour scheme of that, then you go to Moon. Uh, I know I'm supposed to be talking about Transit, but I'm just you know, trying to make the points make sense. If you go from this color scheme, you're like, wow, we've been taking like a darker and grayer, darker and grayer, and things just get gloomy. We had fog in Call of the Dead, and that was the main, most effective point of when we had fog. Luckily, we didn't get any moon, but in Call of the Dead, at least the fog moved. You know, you got that section of the fog's gone, and when the fog was gone, the map felt amazing. It was one of my most favorite maps to play, not having to worry about, the, like, just feeling like condensed and claustrophobic and things like that. Whereas on Transit, you kind of permanently always feel like that. Even on like the, the survival maps on their own and on transit, if you're just running around in town or like anywhere, it just feels like you're trapped and it, I don't think zombies should feel like that. I think it should be like this big open world like transit is and you should feel free to have fucking murderous zombie sprees all the time and I think if they got rid of fog, I honestly think transit would be a lot more fun to play. Now you might be like, no, okay? We can't do this from Treyarch's point of view, and I think with what I'm about to say, I can understand from their point of view um, why this is done. Now, if you've ever seen Transit without fog, you'll see like the scenery and some of the buildings, some of the objects and stuff like that will look really out of place. They'll look jagged, they won't look smoothly finished, because Treyarch have made this huge map where they've made it so a route of a bus can go. It's supposed to, You're supposed to kind of like stay on the bus or get attacked by denizens, that sort of thing. It's not for one for walking around like, oh, look at this bush, it's so nice. Or look at this look at this hillside, it's so fucking awesome. Right? It's not for that. It's, it's just like to fill a space that doesn't need attention in a sense. So if you were to take away all the fog, you'd see all these jagged edges. And for them to go, oh, we don't have to spend our time and resources working on some friggin' hillsides. We'd rather be working on a fucking awesome map or a fucking awesome design or just fucking making things epic like perma perks. Well done, Trey. I fucking love them. They're awesome. <laughs> Sorry. Video tangent again. But um, it's a great way for them to just go, right, throw a fog on it. They won't be able to see that way so we can concentrate on the better things that we've created in the map, like the Easter eggs and stuff like that. Really in-depth Easter eggs. Um, but... I'd love kind of an option if you could give me a custom game option for transit other than hard or original or easy. If you could give me an option of fog on or fog off and I got the option of being able to see transit with shit looking backgrounds, if that's what it looked like, I would happily take that than playing with fog. And then you might be like, ah, no, 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 Tra uh, no, can't do that on transit. And then I'd be like, why not? And you could go, denizens. The denizens need to be in a fog. If you go into the fog, the denizens attack. Simple answer. Really simple. Why not make the fog the, the height of the denizens when they're crawling on the ground? So basically, as 
I don't know, uh, your Xbox controller twice on its edge off the ground, you know? Re like 30 centimeters or something like that. I don't know if that was that was the size, but really, really small amount of fog, which the denizens can run through, make it a bit more difficult. Can't really see the denizens as much, you know? Might be like a really thick layer of fog. So the only way you can hear the den see the denizens is if you can hear them. So I'm trying to balance this so much from like where Treyarch would say like, like, oh, we want to do this, or we want to take this idea into consideration, but you've just been like, oh, change this, change this. I'm trying to balance this. It's what I do with everything I do, um, or try to do, and hence why this video is going to be so friggin' long, so I'm so sorry for those who think this is um, too long and not going to watch it, but if you're a hardcore zombie player, hopefully it makes sense, and please keep giving me feedback on every bullet point I make throughout this, because uh, I really appreciate it. And uh, I'm sure if Treyarch somehow looked across this video and watched all of it, I'm sure the comments, please, please be constructive for them. Because then hopefully, you know, they'll they'll be able to respond it in, in that way as well. So, um, yeah, I think that'd be really cool. Because then imagine that you could run between A and B. And, like, even if the, the edges just happen to get smoothed off of the of the surfaces, it doesn't matter. Just please remove the fog so we can run off and have fun and feel epic. And don't have to change the color palette or anything. It just It's just, you can see everything. It's great when you can see everything. That's what we love. It's a big open map. Let us be able to almost see it all that be so much fun um and you know keep denizens but then if i had to say something about denizens it's just like kind of slow down the spawn rate of them if possible you know like give us gives the chance to have a break because i don't see the denizens as difficult if you've got galvanuckles or even if you just want to take care of them not too hard to deal with just an irritating factor um it is it could be possibly seen as difficult um, if you don't know how to handle them and I, I can see where they came from with the idea and it is, a, it is actually quite a lot of fun but um, I just slow down the spawn rate of them just because they can be very very irritating when you're playing instead of it being like oh it's a challenge I got a denizen on me oh no it's like a, oh for fuck's sake a face rapist already well come on give me a break um, but yeah I think like with the fog idea that was saying you know like, a really small thin layer of fog just on the sections between like perk to perk or like you know between like uh, diner, farm, etc. All between them, them positions. It's just a thin layer of fog, and the denizens still come after you. Because then you can just see everything and all its glory, and feel more positive and not trapped. Because the worst thing you want to have done in a map is feel super, super trapped. Now that's where you can consider like having a map like uh, Verruckt, where you're always inside, tight corner and stuff like that. Um, and probably what Die Rise is going to be. But you know, for an outside map, it is nice to be able to see everything. Just, it's really nice. So um, yeah, that's my opinion on the fog. And, uh, you know, like the denizens as well, you know, I said that I just need them to calm down a little bit. So, there's kind of a negative, try to turn it into a positive. And uh, it's time to talk about a fucking awesome, awesome positive. Treyarch. Wow. G fucking G. That means good fucking game. <laughs> um, sharing points. Like, thank you. Thank you so much for this. This is... It's great because, like, you know, some people might be like, they've ignored us. I see it in the comments all the time. Like, they've just ignored what we said. And I'm like, how can you say that? There's so many positive things in Zombies as a whole that they've implemented on. They might have not done everything with us because we've said thousands of things. They can't. They don't have the resources to do this. But if you have to think about it, they give us the ability to share points, and they did it in an Easter egg style. Like, you have to get the galvan knuckles. You have to punch the, the keys in the bank laying on the floor then to be able to activate it wears off out a certain amount of time and you know you can then introduce EMPs you can throw EMPs at it and lose them you know if the zombies attack you and you, you're like no I've just put 100,000 points on the floor to share with someone then um, they, they, they can't get it back sort of thing so it's a really really fun little challenge there um, but at the same time you know it's pretty easy to do you just punch it with your galva knuckles activates it you know you transfer a thousand points of time it costs you 100 points to do and your teammate say if he's low on ammo uh, sorry even yeah low on ammo low on perks you can give him points from your bank uh, which is something else is fucking amazing positive and then they can jump on that um what is your called zombie points just floating in the air um, if you've ever played five you've oh wait is it five no moon uh, and you throw a qed you can get like this thing that looks like a cod zombie point it's the image for cod points i think um i don't know what the full name of is it but that's what i'm going to call it cod zombie points and uh, jump on it and it gives you x amount of points sort of thing so it's a really cool little uh, easter egg in the game so being able to share points is epic and that's what i was talking about people didn't discover this till like a month after the game was out sort of thing so there's still so much hidden clearly um so that's a really cool thing so Treyarch, i think that's amazing i think you did a really really great idea with that and hopefully we can see it throughout all the maps because it's a really smart idea so thank you um going from a positive to a negative i'm going to be talking about buildables now um you might be like whoa why is that a negative and to me i just feel like 
They're not as powerful as I think they should be. And you might be like, if everything's overpowered, the game becomes easy. But the buildables are something I don't use. And if you go to somebody who does high round zombies, they ain't using them. Now, if you made it a challenge to make us to be able to use them, say like, you know, they break after a while or, you know, like the, something like that, then you might be like, oh yeah, I'm actually gonna make sure I pick up one of these and then to be able to use it, etc., etc. But you need a turbine to be able to power everything. If you pick up a turret, then you throw your turret down, you put your turbine next to it, then it starts shooting. Uh, you know, it gets hit a few times and it's not that effective. You know, it really isn't. You know, you could do more damage with on your own, just running around, rape training, that sort of thing. Um, so in my eyes, I just think they should just be a little more overpowered. You know, I don't use them that much. There could be a way of making them ten times more epic that we just don't know about. But in my eyes, they're just not as effective for the effort you go through to create them. It even goes with a jet gun, you know, that is, you know, you could say that's the an epic, epic gun, but it is, you know, you speak to anyone who does high rounds, they're disappointed with that sort of gun because, you know, it takes forever to build it, to get hold of it, and yeah, to get hold of a wonder weapon. Uh, anyway, you'd have to hit the box thousands of times, well, not thousands, you know, just a load of times if you're, if you're really unlucky to try and get anything of use that can take you to a high round, like a thunder gun or something like that. But um, so you can finally build it, and when you build it, it's just it's just a bit disappointing. And um, yeah, the buildables just destroy too quickly. I think even like with your, you know, even with your turbine, that thing gets destroyed way too easily. And uh, I don't know if it's me; it just seems to glitch out. I go and get a new one, so I know like when I go to quit uh, to pack a punch, even you know, I run all the way over there, throw it down um, at, at the power plant, run all the way back to a town, and then by the time I get to town, it's gone for some reason. And you know, I've been live streaming when I've had the zombie behind me the entire time, so he can't attack the the actual turbine, and then I run to town, and it's just not open, my pack-a-punch door, and I'm like, well, I don't get this, so, kind of weird, but I kind of do like a fact of the building the pack-a-punch machine, and I, and I thought that was going to link in to the, the perk machines, and, you know, if they were going to throw in all the perks normally, and then for, to get, like, a new perk machine, you have to build that, that would be fun, it would be annoying, don't get me wrong, it would be fun, but it's something to think of if they were going to balance it of, like, Hey, you want new perks? We can't just give you new perks if it's just going to be super easy for you to get it. Maybe you have to build it. But this is where I think Transit should pick up on the um, the Easter egg side of things. Of whereas if you get if you get something complete, it stays that way. So I think with the with the pack a punch system, you should have to collect the parts. You know, because the whole buildable system, you should have to collect parts to build like a battery where you can stick it into the you know the pack a punch green door and it opens it permanently instead of you know like you're having to redo it and redo it and redo it so like if you start up a solo game it's you know freshly always done and ready the pack a punch door is like always open that sort of thing and you might be like oh that defeats the point of us even putting the turbine in and making it a challenge but just for me it just comes across as kind of annoying and kind of a chore to do so sorry about that track but just the buildables in my opinion just not effective as enough not as sorry not effective enough and um, just seem like a chore to actually complete, so my bad. All right, so moving on, we're going to be talking about the bank system. Treyarch, again, just great, <laughs> so good. They gave us this bank vault door, and we're like, how the hell do we get this open? We're, we're shooting it with guns, we're, uh, we're doing everything we can, apart from, let's hopefully say, not throwing explosives at it or anything, until you throw a grenade at it or a monkey bomb or, you know, something explosive, the door whacks open. Wow, what a cool thing to do, you know, you think it's just a prop or something and you know You would hope you get in there with the Easter egg But no, you can get in there to get to pack a punch, but at the same time you can get there to access the bank system So good, so good. Why is it so good? You can play solo You can transfer points from your your in-game that you're playing You can have like 800 plus thousand points go into your bank store every single point of it End the game, go into multiplayer, withdraw all your points. Go in, uh, or, you know, put them back in, go into a new game altogether, withdraw your points, transfer your points, do whatever you want with them. Share it with your friends. Your friend's like, ah, damn it, I wish I had like 500,000 points. I could be like, you sir, just won 500,000 points. Go online, withdraw it all, give it to them. How cool would that, would that be? And guess what? They actually did it. It actually exists. So I think it's one of the most coolest things they uh, have done in zombies someone might be like but it uh, why is that point what, what's the point in that you know it's not it's not actually that good syndicate i'd say it is i think i think it's a really good decision for treyarch to do something like that because you know i've actually had it in multiplayer where i've taken out all my points and then the game's ended and because all the game's been corrupted so then i lose all my points and i'm like for fuck's sake i've lost all that i jump online and you know i'm seeing all my teammates withdrawing points and i'm like guys i know i don't really want to be asking this but any chance you can lend me a uh, 20k so I can get started? And they're like, absolutely. 
you know, they can they share, they get it out of the bank, they share it with me and put give me 20k points. And then, uh, you know, once I've got enough points stored up, I can go back to them later on and go, hey, you lent me them points. Here's me returning it. Go and put it in your bank. That sort of thing. And, you know, just the, even the ability to go between games to do it is really, really cool. So, Treyarch, thank you so much for that. I thought it was a great idea. And um, GG for that. So, going from a positive to a negative. Going to be a weird one this time, but wall guns. Yep, said it. And some people might be like, what? how is this even a negative? Um, how is wall guns a negative? Um, pretty, pretty pretty, easy in my, in my eyes. Um, you jump into it and you might be like, right, you start off um, in most Call of Duties or every Call of Duty map, you've had each room or section holds a gun. Think about Kino de Toto and you start off first room, t uh, two guns on the wall. Take a left, uh, MPL, I believe. The next room, AK. 74U. Next room, nothing, but it's a mystery box location. Uh, next next room after that, you've got the staircase, if you can class that as a room. And then, like, you know, go into the full main room. You've got the M16 on the wall. Uh, you've got the, the knife, the claymores, the MP5 lead on from that. And people are like, oh, how does he know all this? It's because I could map out every single zombie map possible. Because uh, I love them that much. Um, but I just don't think there's enough guns on the wall. And I think this is where they could take um, advantage of some of the guns from multiplayer. So add more guns into it, whether this takes up more resources of stuff they can actually add into the game without filling up the disc space. This is why I think if Zombies was its own game, they would have so much more freedom of things they can actually do. So, do I want it to take that approach? Yes, because then Zombies would be so much more epic if that's possible. But yeah, that'd be great if it had its own game. Just think about the amount of size that multiplayer takes up and the amount of effort and resources it does and then think about the amount of effort campaign takes up, whereas I only just go on Black Ops 2 for mainly zombies. A bit of multiplayer now and again with Kate, but mainly just zombies. So I think if it was his own game and it had like a huge amount of resources available to itself, then I think Treyarch could probably take into consideration all this. But yeah, just not enough war guns. I'd say like in town, for example, you know, you've got that area where to run to the nearest gun, you have to sprint all the way. Either, well, this is without saying the, the mystery box is there. You've got to sprint all the way over back to the first, you know, the first place you start off to buy an M14 or an Olympia off the wall, or turn around and go back all the way to town to buy an AK-74U, which by the time you've used that ammo up, which doesn't have actually quite a lot, you've got all the way back there and you're out of ammo, you know, so you could pack a punch it, but then you've got no more way of getting ammo if you want to stay in town to, like, keep the pack a punch door open. Um, but, you know, I could say it's a challenge, but in my opinion, I just think there needs to be one gun at least, um, something that's like fully automatic because then it gives people the chance to be able to get a good amount of points together, store it in the bank and, you know, it gives people just an option to go on like, oh, I'm going to go and put like 100k points in my bank. I'm just going to jump on zombies for a bit and, uh, you know, play, store some points, that sort of, that sort of jazz and uh, could lead to a lot of fun challenges just holding off in town together in certain areas. Um, but, hey, I just think, you know, scattered around the place there should be a bit more wall guns even if it's... Um, uh, this is going to be a weird one, even if it's rotating war guns, so in different locations, you know, like some say the same, like the starting room stays the same, but like scattered around the map, some change, you know, like possibly not every time, you know, it's one of them, I could I could say, yeah, do this and then change my opinion on it, but it'd be cool to see like, um, oh, here's, you think there's going to be an MP5, but you go to it and it's a shotgun, or, oh, I want to go and get the, sh the shotgun, or, oh, no, it's an MP5, or it's a... Imagine an LMG on the wall, but it, it changes like every round. That'd be sick if the if the war guns were there, but they changed every round. That'd be pretty sick. Like end of the round, it goes, and then you look on the wall and you turn around. And it's an MP5. Turn around, it's a shotgun. Turn around, it's an LMG. And if it's the LMG, you're like, fuck yes. Everyone wants to be at the uh, you know the LMG side, but then it gives you more reason to move around in transit. So. Yeah, side tangent of something I'm talking about, apart from talking about main points. So, yeah, add more wall guns, and uh, I think we'll be rocking and rolling, Treyarch, um, with certain sections of maps. And, um, yeah, so let's then move on to a positive, which is going to be perma perks. Treyarch, well done! Gee, gee! Perma perks are amazing. You know, you've got your steel planks, if you didn't know about that, if you're repairing off windows on the bus, I'm going to shout. I'm going to say the bus. Um, you can actually repair windows that have steel barriers instead of steel planks because I think it's such a cool little aspect 
You know, it takes the zombies longer to break through. It's good at holding off if you're doing like a little challenge to hold off like on the bus or in certain locations. So I think that's a really cool one. You then got the next one, which, um, you know, you could say Deadshot Daiquiri um, is the hidden perk of where you, you scope in, you automatically aim at the zombie's head so it gives you better accuracy, that sort of thing, and a better chance of killing the zombies if you just keep tapping your left trigger in. Um, so that's a cool one. Then you've got the Quick Revive Pro perk, which is fucking great you know pick up at your teammates over 13 times and you'll see the green poof this is how you activate a perma perk if you've never known just youtube like perm perm perk and you'll find them and um all you'll see is like a poof of green light when you pick up like um an insta kill or something like that but it's own like unique little ball pop up above your head and um the quick revive lets you pick up your teammates like twice as fast by quick revive as well and it's like even faster so that's really cool and the most recent one is that like perma perk of Jugga juggernaut which is friggin amazing you know it, you can be considered like oh this makes it easier um for like new players if they do it but then again you know transit can be really difficult for new players and it can be seen as a challenge for the hardcore players so instead of them buying juggernaut and just using like this standard perma juggernaut that you've got instead you know gives you more room for space of perks you could get everything else other than juggernaut and you take one less hit if you would have had it's gonna sound weird let me just base it to this Without the Juggernaut perma perk, two hits you down. With it, four hits you down. If you if you don't get if you do get Juggernaut without this perma perk, five hits you down. So, you know you get one hit less if you don't have Juggernaut. So it makes it kind of harder in a sense for the for the more hardcore players. So you could buy like quick revive all your other perks and then you know get hit like four times and be like ooh nearly went down. Take another hit, you go down, and um, it's all gravy, baby. So oh no. Other way around, take three hits, then one more hit, then you're down. It's all gravy, baby. You're down, and uh, could be seen as like a little bit of a hardcore challenge to do whilst playing a uh, playing transit. Um, so yeah, they're them. Uh, there's probably like tons more hidden in the map. There's probably a mule kick one version available. It's just a way of people got to find out how possibly to do it. Might even be like buy all the weapons off the wall, that sort of thing, and pack a punch mall. Who knows? We'll have to try and find out. But um, hopefully, we do find out because that'd be absolutely great. Um, quick, easy one. Um, so yeah, Treyarch, that was a huge positive from you guys. Next one is going to be that there is no real wonder weapon, you know. There is no wonder waffle, there is no thunder gun, there is no wave gun. Uh, you know, like there's no scavenger. Uh, none of this seen in the actual map of transit. You know, it might be something you've got to unlock, but it's not been seen yet and it's not been unlocked yet. So from the get-go, there is no wonder weapon you can receive from the box, which, you know, we kind of were hoping for or expecting. You know, like I did the video about the war machine saying I hope that what this could be, but no, no real wonder wonder weapon. And I did talk about this in my gun review, so I'll just keep this short and say, you know, we kind of were expecting one and we didn't get one, you know? So, uh, or yeah, we haven't found it, if that's the way you want to say it, but it's not in the box, that's to say for sure. So um, the next one is, um, sadly, it's, uh, actually, let's go to this positive one. Nat Duran Toten, you put Nat Duran Toten, you put a map in a map, Inception, but at the same time, it was just, really cool of you and hopefully that you know we haven't obviously figured out the full easter egg but hopefully that's got some like cool relevance to be there because it was just nice to see you know putting a, nap, a map inside a map so i uh, hope that there is a huge easter egg to do in there on its own that we just don't know about which we can access the rest of the building and i bet that's where you've just friggin hidden all the perks and i bet it's really easy like shoot this and uh, you shoot this the door opens and the debris clear and uh, you've got every perk and like a real Pack a punch too, which doubles your ammo and just you know something crazy on the other side of the door. But <laughs> that would be awesome. Um, but obviously, I am I'm I'm dreaming big there. But um, yeah, you know, cool cool Easter egg um, to throw in there, which then links me off to the negative of the main Easter egg of saying I think it took up a bit too much like priority. You know, for saying yeah, we have like a zombie campaign now or something like that. And I know I can't speak for Trey. I could be like, this is actually what they did. But it's a point that hopefully they may respond to if it's either a video of them guys just sit down and kind of like, I'll put in the description, you know, my points of what I'm thinking about and if they read through the comments of like the most frequently asked question or re wanting a reason for something being done, like what their thoughts of process were. Kind of like what they did at Cod XP, but uh, they just do like a video a user response uh, session. That'd be really cool. Um, but yeah, it's, I think... A lot was focused on this main easter egg of setting out in stone a storyline of things that needed to be done and step by step and all that and like kind of moved away from like the old school and when i say old school i mean like the rise old school like with um with shangri-la 
you know you, you you had to find one radio to lead to one next radio and you had to do the, like this full um like easter egg which was a crazy easter egg to see unfold but you had to do this whole crazy easter egg to unlock these radios but do you know how much fun it actually is to look around and find these radios it's it's so much fun like so 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 much fun like Derives was amazing to do that on. Ascension was amazing. Like so much time was spent at the first se section of it, just finding these radios and unlocking them. And you know, like you have to find the first one to unlock the next one. So people would spend forever doing that. So I think it would be nice to just see, you know, more of them. And you probably sat there again, just laughing, going, "They're all there. You just haven't found them. Go look in the fog somewhere. You'll you'll discover it." But you know, I haven't found any yet. So this is just my opinion from going. Haven't found them, and um, yeah, it would be nice to see some like old school little like Easter eggs thrown back in there, like you know, pieces of paper hidden in places, like just exactly like on Derise, where the not not Die Rise, the, the 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 old school zombie map, where like you look in a grid and you find a piece of paper, and then you have to translate that piece of paper to find out what it was, or like pictures of the next maps, like hidden on a you know a. a post-it board or something like that or a, a cork board there you go um just like you know old school easter eggs to take a step back and be like yeah we got this huge storyline but we're also going to remember like the, the old school style of where the easter eggs pretty much came from and the storyline itself came from so yeah i think it'd be cool to see them back and uh, hopefully die rise does have them but haven't found any yet so much in in transit um i'm sure there's going to be loads that you know are there you know like you see moon um, in the letters of the of like the neon lights, but like some proper radios and some proper things like letters and stuff like that, I think that'd be awesome. And uh, yeah, but uh, hey, at least you kept the old school music radio. I thought that was that was really cool. Obviously, you can't get rid of that. It's in every every zombies map, but yeah, that was that was a really nice nice song. I like that one. I like to rock out to that. Would be cool if we could um, if you gave us the option to go and hit the teddy bears again to get more music. I know it's always been known for once you do it, but it would be cool if you could do it again. And then it play the music again. I, if that's a request I could ever possibly do, that would be sweet. So, track, love you. Hugs and kisses. That would be very, very cool. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much, like, my um, my points that I've ticked off. I think I've gone over everything. I'll just read them all out. It was lack of perks, tombstone, solo and online, the fog, uh, the face fuckers to calm down and, uh, you know, like the fog to be lowered. Uh, the sharing points was epic. The buildables were, you know, they broke too easily and just not effective enough. The bank system, storing points, and, you know, the linking between the games of points was amazing. Um, just a lack of wall guns in in, tra in transit. Uh, the perma perks, you know, the steel planks, the dead shot, the quick revive, the jugger were, were really, really cool. Um, there's no real wonder weapon to be able to get from the box. Um, you know, I didn't really mention this, but I did in my weapon review of pack a punch twice doesn't really do anything Not really that effective, but I don't think I can link that just with transit because you know even on town You can do it twice. So it's something that's just across the whole of zombies not really just um, Transit itself and then a uh, nat drone totem being in there. That's super cool lack of little Easter eggs and then for the main Easter egg I don't know Um if this can be done solo then that'd be great, but I'm not too sure it can be done solo I'm just gonna throw that out there if it can then sweet i'd love to give it a go and get it done but from what i know you have to play multiplayer to do it um but i think it'd be nice if like consideration would always be taken in like i'm thinking back to ascension now of like letting the solo guys be able to get in on this easter egg as well but do it on their own like if you have to change one section of it or certain sections of it just to allow a single person to do it if it makes it too easy then I'm sorry, make it, can we change something to make it a little bit more difficult or something like that? Just so like the solo guys can do it and then maybe I might get into Easter eggs because I'm kind of sick of seeing like my games get disconnected. Uh, and I know this isn't the zombie guy's fault. It's just like, tr uh, not Treyax. It's just like the servers and stuff like that. I've got like 0 0.2 download right now here in Oklahoma. But um, I'm not living here, by the way. I'm just staying out here for a bit. Um, you know... It, it, it's difficult for me to play online with people. I can't even look on the leaderboards of the internet's that bad. So, you know, I have a genuine reason not to be able to play multiplayer and get the Easter egg done. But I think it would be nice to see some solo Easter eggage uh, going on of main story Easter egg. That'd be epic um, to go through and then uh, to get either a different or um, epic reward at the end of it. So, yeah, that's pretty much everything, I think. Long ass video, like 30 minute video, which is nuts. Um, I did want to try and cram this into a 12 minute video, but I knew it was impossible, so kind of thought, balls to it, uh, here it is, might as well throw this out there, so I did, but um, yeah guys, I hope I've been balanced as possible, I know it's been a long one, if you have been here this time, and there happens to be even one of you here, then I'd really appreciate it if you could like the video and comment saying, I, I'm a true zombie community fan for watching this video, or 
I'm a true rape trainer or a zombie killer or whatever you want to do because I'd really appreciate that, you know, just to know, like, people have watched this the whole way through. And I know people did with the weapon review, but, yep, big ass long video. Don't forget, if you've got any points, leave them in the comments below so we can hear what you have to say. And, guys, my name's been Syndicate. Thank you for watching. This has been one long freaking video. If you do like this style of video, um, being lengthy and stuff like that, then I can. And if there's certain topics you want me to talk about, again, please leave another comment just saying, like, what, what sort of topic it would be. Or tweet me, let me know. And, uh, yeah, that's pretty much everything, guys. Thank you for watching. Hope you've enjoyed the video. If you happen to stay this long and you're a new, uh, a new viewer, then uh, make sure you click that subscribe button for more zombie videos. And my name will be gone in your friend's fair. Well, I don't even know what I'm saying. But, yeah, I'm tired. I've tried doing this, like, ten times. And, uh, yeah, it's taking me, like, three hours. So, <laughs> anyway, thanks, guys. Thanks for watching. And adios, Treyarch. Fucking love you. You're awesome. You uh, make my favorite game. And, um, yeah, let me know what you think of these opinions. Adios.